From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome to Chicago Newsroom. This is the second show, our second edition this week, as we divide our show into two parts. The first dealing with the mayor's race and the second, a more in-depth look at some of our aldermanic runoff races. And we get three of these races left, and they're largely in Chicago's African-American communities, from Chatham in the south through Roseland, Englewood, and up into Austin and parts of Galewood. Each has an incumbent alderman, or at least a sort of an incumbent alderman. We'll get to more of that later on. And each ward has a lot of its votes cast for Rahm Emanuel last time. He did very well in these wards. So the politics is very interesting in these wards and here to help us to figure all this out and to go way beyond these three wards is the governor of talk radio making his triumphant first appearance at this table, Cliff Kelly. Glad to be here, Ken. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. this, WVON. Right. And I was just telling Cliff that now with iHeartRadio, you can listen to WVON crystal clear anywhere, just in your pocket, and it's a, it's a huge, great asset. Glad to have that happening. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks. For I'm being happy here. to be here with you, Ken, and these two wonderful gentlemen. And there. these two wonderful mm -hmm. gentlemen are Mick Dumkey, the wonderful Mick Dumkey from The Reader, who uh, of course has been here many, many times and knows a lot about politics in Chicago. Mick? Good to be here. And a founding panelist that's of correct. Chicago Newsroom. <laughs> uh, what's your name again? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Ben Jarosz. Who were the other two founding panelists for 10 trivia points? Uh, Don't Karen blow Lewis it. Very good. And Eric Zorn. Very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. From the first show back in 1936, I think. <laughs> that's a senility <laughs> test. Yeah. You passed. It was, the it bar was, is low it was as one always. of the first demonstrations of television. That is correct. <laughs> at the there World's was a, Fair. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the World's Fair. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So, look, here's the ground rules, folks. Okay. We have only 27, 25 minutes left, and we got to talk about a few awards, and we got to talk about this incredible election that we're having and I'll try to shut up and just let you people talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, 16th, uh, to, let's, let's do this by the books, right? 16th Ward, Tony Fox and Stephanie Coleman. Stephanie Coleman, I mean, uh, Tony Fox was the alderman of the 15th Ward, mm -hmm. right? And uh, she decided she didn't like the way they had redistricted that ward, so she moved over to the 16th and is attempting to convince those people that she's their incumbent. Well, it's not just that Alderman folks didn't like the way <laughs> the map was redrawn. <laughs> well, it's that the ma yeah. map was redrawn to screw Tony Folks. So uh, essentially, she, she didn't like it because her house wasn't in it anymore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, small right. technicality. <laughs> um, but no, the uh, because of the new census numbers, there needed to be at least one new his majority Hispanic ward mm -hmm. drawn, mm -hmm. and uh, basically at the expense of an African American ward. Um, and the way politics works in Chicago. Tony Folks, the, uh, the alderman among the African American caucus who mm -hmm. votes least often with Mayor <laughs> Manuel. So right. surprise, surprise, she's the one who got mapped out of her own ward. Yeah. So ben, that's the that backstory. for just a second. Th this, is, this is our list that we've been having so much fun with of how often people vote with the mayor. These are 100%. Right. Mm -hmm. And what cracks me up about this is when you get down to the bottom, that's where you find uh, Wag uh, well, you find Fioretti and Arena, the two people who were who were completely, uh, th whose wards were obliterated because they well, only well, voted well, with the mayor right. about forty percent. Well, actually, Arena's that. ward was not obliterated. Uh, Fioretti's. Fioretti, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. Fioretti. Yeah. 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 They they couldn't and get around to obliterating right. <laughs> Arena's. <laughs> yeah, because uh, that right. Because that just would have caused too much. I'm thinking of but, uh, but to keep ward, things in context, yeah. Tony folks considered expendable by yeah. the powers that be. Right, right. Still mm -hmm. voted with Mayor Manuel on divided roll call votes 87 percent of the oh, time only, that's what that passes for only 87 percent and, and as i was saying before the show this undercounts because the vast majority of legislation to go through the city council is passed in an mm -hmm. omnibus right. high same vote as the last vote thing right, right. Mm -hmm. so these are only the handful of instances when there was any kind of uh, dissension among the ranks. You and remember so the omnibus? You were an alderman Certainly. for many years. Certainly. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> the, end of the, right. the end of the meeting. Doesn't they go up Clark Street? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That That's an interesting situation. And people, uh, it's amazing to me, and you hear some folks, of, of all places, Arizona, for instance, the governor just signed a bill requiring the teaching of civics to anyone who really wants to graduate. 
We don't even do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a shame because when you talk about a strong council, weak mayor, form of government, and people say, you're crazy. You know, mm -hmm. that's not true. And I've heard people say that's not true. I say, well, think of council wars. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is true. Yeah, and it, it is true. And of course, uh, uh, Emmanuel's got his own, what is it, Chicago Forward or whatever it is. Yes. Uh, he, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Uh, actually supporting certain aldermen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if I could just interrupt, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we achieved a level of ignominity we'd never believed we would. Our a piece of video of our interview with Chewy Garcia was ripped off by the Emanuel campaign and used in a in a in an anti-Garcia <laughs> man. So I was thinking maybe I would uh, uh, call up <laughs> Becky over there yeah. at Chicago Forward Did they and cut say, you any money for that? Like, you know, couldn't you? I mean, yeah. come on, you could kick us a hundred thousand yeah, bucks. Yeah, right. Exactly. Griffin just gave him how much? How much did Ken Griffin just <laughs> kick I, in? I don't know. It was nine hundred fifty thousand yeah. in the month of March. In the month yeah. of March. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come oh. on. Between right, Chicago just, Ford and Ron's just ten thousand yeah. dollars. It was so weird. It's like here's this attack, 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 like clubbing him over the head, poor mm -hmm. Chewy Garcia. And then suddenly there's a picture of him sitting right there, talking, no, no sound. But well, that's that's gonna be. <laughs> De decisive with a lot of voters. Like he goes on Ken Davis' show. <laughs> and he's done. He'll do it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm right. He's the kind of guy who goes on Chicago News. <laughs> Pan TV. We know who hangs yeah, out over there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so um, 16th, 16th Ward. Yes. So all right. So we have Tony Folks who decided that because essentially she was going to have trouble, she figured in a majority Hispanic ward, she decided to, to uh, run the 16th Ward, which actually did pick up some of the territory from her own ward anyway. Mm -hmm. So she's running against in the runoff against Stephanie Coleman, who's the daughter of the former alderman of the 16th Ward a couple sure. terms back, mm -hmm. uh, Shirley Coleman, mm -hmm. um, who was defeated by Joanne Thompson, who um, looked to be the person competing with folks until she had, you know, unexpectedly mm -hmm. died mm -hmm. shortly before mm -hmm. the February balloting. Mm -hmm. So we have sort of a the daughter of a political dynasty of some sort from before, certainly a strong political presence from before against Tony Folks, who's attempting to be one of the few remaining uh, progressive aldermen in the city council. 21st Ward, Howard Brookins, been around for a long time, I think. He's like a three-time incumbent, isn't he, Howard Brookins? He's yeah. been around a long time. 2003, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's up against Marvin McNeil, who I believe is a police officer. Oh, he's a retired city, uh, I think a zoning inspector. Oh, I'm sorry, he's yeah. the zoning inspector, okay. that's right. There yes. are Same a lot thing. of cops running. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. so many, I, so I, get, I get confused, right. yeah. That was a surprise to me, gentlemen, because of, of course, uh, the alderman is the head of the Council Black Caucus, mm -hmm. and uh, I was surprised that he was pushing to a runoff. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it happened? There, according to what I'm told, there are a number of people that are just displeased with what he's doing in the ward. Mm -hmm more so than his votes on the council floor. So I'm not sure which it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? it's hard to say that anybody's being punished for their votes on the council floor mm -hmm. um, since uh, the city seems poised to reelect the mayor mm -hmm. who, whose instructions they were following. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I, <laughs> I suspect it has something to do with, we were talking about this before we went on air, there's um, his former uh, chief of staff, is it? Is it his former chief of yeah, staff? Yeah, that's uh, right. That's uh, right. Pled guilty. Yeah. Did I get that correct? Mm -hmm. Some corruption charge? Did, yeah. Yes. So that may have something. Even Chicago has some kinds of standards well, <laughs> in these things. I, I tell you, though, it was one of the interesting thing. One of the, uh, this person did not make uh, the runoff, but there was a lady that I know, and she was out there. Uh, I don't know where she got this gravel from, but she was out there, it was on TV, she was filling up potholes. Okay. Yeah, out of out of yeah. the trunk of her car. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now no, that's, that's a good alderman. Yeah. 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 And I think what's interesting is we're always tempted as uh, as as the so called analysts to think, as Ben was saying, that these are about you know, how they vote in the council. Mm -hmm. Are you are you for or against the mayor? People mm -hmm. are either if they like the mayor, they're gonna keep you. If they don't like the mayor, they're gonna throw you out if you're a rubber stamp. It's really, you're right, I yeah. think it comes down to potholes yeah. and service yeah. delivery. Yeah. Yeah. And in this instance, yeah, Alderman Brookins, uh, it doesn't help when your former chief of staff is caught handing, accepting an envelope from an FBI informant. Um, that al that mm. always screws things up it's, when that happens. It's a yeah. problem. So yeah. Rahm, Rahm Emanuel won 42 percent in the uh, in the first election uh, in in the ward. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, he fought 42 percent in the 21st ward. Okay, which is down yeah. significantly yeah. 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 from what he won. 
four years ago, he probably got in the high 50s. Mm. Uh, okay. You uh -huh. know, that ward is traditionally a lot more independent minded, though, I think, right. than a lot of other South Side wards are. Mm -hmm. um, you usually see, I think, in even the latter daily years, you saw the last couple election cycles. Um, daily challengers always got their some of mm -hmm. their highest vote totals mm -hmm. in the 21st ward. So, so it's an, uh, what's interesting about the ward geographically is it's one of those like four or five wards left that are still compact and contiguous. It's kind of a square. It's uh, basically uh, like 80th to state down to 99th and over to Ashland, and it's uh, so it has been it's held together. I guess maybe maybe uh, Howard Brookins has had the juice to keep his ward together or yeah. something, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, any thoughts about what's happening there? Is, is he in trouble? Is Howard Brookings gonna, is, is he gonna make it? Well, the polling numbers, I think, that have come in showed him with a uh, pretty considerable lead. Um, I think, you know, he, there are multiple challengers the first round mm -hmm. and um, he, I don't remember his percentage. I don't think he missed out by that much. So I would expect that's, that's Howard's mm -hmm. to lose there. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, his challenger, Mr. McNeil, has a ways to go. Um, that's my sense of things. Yeah. But again, you never know. You Look, just when, never know. And with all the runoffs, 50% mm -hmm. of the voters chose to vote against yeah. the incumbent they, yeah. they've known for 12 <clears throat> years. Yeah. That's never a great sign right. for the incumbent. So anything could happen. But my money would probably go on Alderman <coughs> Brookings winning mm -hmm. re-election there. Jumping over to the 29th Ward, 29th is, is a God, what a bizarre map the 29th is. It's like, it's like a stair step. It's this n narrow little thing that, go, that starts as far south as uh, Roosevelt Road, steps up and west. It, it starts at like Roosevelt Road and um, I don't know, like Cicero or something, but steps up and ends up at like Belmont and Harlem. I mean, it's just an unbelievable ward. So this is Deborah Graham's ward. What did she do to deserve that kind of a map? <laughs> well. I think mm -hmm. as, as with the 16th Ward and the 15th Ward we were talking about earlier, um, the challenge for the, uh, the allies of the mayor who were drawing the map was all the, was the census numbers came in that showed the black population dropped and the Hispanic population grew, mm -hmm. but yet you have a very powerful set of black mm -hmm. incumbents. Mm -hmm. And so there was this balancing act between trying to represent the new census numbers and trying to protect loyal incumbents, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. And so the 29th Ward has um, been the home of a loyal incumbent since long before Alderman Graham was yeah, there. Yeah. And so I think what they did is they just tried to squeeze out some territory to keep that a majority black ward, but it, it drifted up to the Northwest because um, there had to be some Hispanic, even white areas yeah. added up there, yeah. but they wanted to keep it majority um, African So it's American. not that they did something to her, they actually did her a big I think they tried her. to keep her at office. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. The only alderman that I am aware of that really they went after with the ward maps were um, Fioretti in the second ward, which is ironic since mm -hmm. as soon as the election was over, or at least he waited two weeks, he flip flopped and endorsed Rom. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so maybe they'll <laughs> bring back the old second <laughs> ward now. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, they need to get, they need to get That I don't understand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. part? That they, <laughs> that, they, that the flip flop of Fioretti? Yeah, 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 really. Yeah. No, because 80, 80, 80 grand. Uh, it's nothing. No. I know. We no. could raise that for him right now. Yeah. You know, on a call in. Yeah, the guy's been great. Right now, he's been, he's We're been, doing a telephone. We don't, don't yeah, right. No, no, you don't <laughs> understand. No, he's been great. He's been the leader of the progressive group, and he's done a great job. To throw it all away yeah. in one day is, yeah. is, is sad. And uh, folks, as Mick uh, alluded to, they went after her. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, or at least sacrificed her. She was the weakest lady. Yeah, she was. Yeah. And then. Um, our dear friend, Mr. Spazzato, Spazzato the firefighter right, from right. the northwest side, mm -hmm. uh, they moved him around. And now then my alderman. He's your alderman, mm -hmm. but then again, the firefighters cut a deal with Ron, <laughs> uh, and so now suddenly Spazzato and Ron right, you know, are loving right, each right. other. I like to tease <laughs> Nick about that. You know, that's yeah. your new best friend. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah. you stick around, everything changes anyway. Yeah. So uh, I've long endorsed going to a situation where we do uh, wards the way we do garbage pickup. Don't, don't Just we do have that grid system? Grid system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't see no evidence that black aldermen are more beneficial to black constituents mm -hmm. yeah. uh, than white aldermen are. I would yeah. argue that the greatest alderman for uh, black people other than Cliff Kelly uh, <laughs> would be Leon Dupre. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Leon Dupre, <laughs> he was not yeah. black. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's just yeah. go to a grid system and call it a day. You know, that's actually a very good idea. All we got to do is just put numbers on the grids and then you just vote for, you're, you're just Well, the one thing you should do, and I think most of you, you guys would probably agree, the first thing you need to do is to reduce the number 
oh, of wow. the members in the city council. You no, know, did, did Rahm ever even vaguely entertain that at one point? I can't remember. No, he did no. not. He backed uh, off. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Could yeah. cut it in half to twenty-five. That hey, whatever. I mean, look at New York. You know, twice the size. We've got thirty-five. Los so Angeles has got twelve. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting question, Cliff, because I've always been a little bit swayed by the argument that there is something good about having somebody who's more, you know, more on the ground with the with the population. If you had been told when you were an alderman that the next day you were going to represent twice as many people, I even you? suggested it. You, you thought you could handle it? Yeah, I even so suggested it. So you could go from like 60,000 to 120,000 Oh, sure, people. sure, absolutely. You, you would cut the expense to the taxpayers uh, to a great degree. There's a lot of uh, money that's involved in supporting the system as it exists now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can reduce it, and I think uh, probably most, if, if you put that on a ballot, it would pass. It would pass. Yeah. It would pass. Yeah. And then it gets oh. shoved into a... Uh, it would go to the <laughs> Rules Committee. Yeah, Rules yeah. Committee. <laughs> yeah. I just think about this, though. Then the rubber stamp alderman would be twice as powerful. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Now. That's no, I, no, I, I, I'm not sure that, that works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it would be even more difficult to be a rubber stamp alderman. Yeah. No, I, I actually... Yeah. See, why? Why would that be? Because I think with more people and uh, more people getting involved, the, the thing is now, if we can change the philosophy of the fact that your alderman doesn't make a difference, mm -hmm. and there are people, and this is why I was so disappointed with Fioretti, because mm -hmm. he did a good job servicing his people, notwithstanding the fact that he was not in favor with the mayor of the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need that. Yeah. No, you definitely yeah. don't need exactly. that. Exactly. That, yeah. So this is why I think it would work. Yeah. Going back to yeah. the days when Cliff was in the council, uh, the, generally, the most outspoken independents were from the North Lake Front. So you had like Marty Overman, yeah, uh, right. Bill Singer. Right. Those wards were well taken care of. Exactly. This notion yeah. that if your alderman defies the mayor, you're going to get punished is totally made up. Exactly. As anybody who's ever just done a bike ride through the city will know, mm -hmm. the streets mm -hmm. are crumbling everywhere. So yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> you can't tell the difference at any given time which ward you're in, whether you're the alderman. The busy bike people are going to do something about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 People are paving the streets. Well, it's funny because there's a growing clout for bike riders yeah, right. in the yeah. city, too. So. But it is interesting, though, that you know, starting back with uh, Daily 2, uh, the creation of the 311 system, I, I always thought if I were an alderman, I would have seen that as being pretty much the end of my role, because now all you got to do is just pick up your smartphone or whatever. There's a million ways to communicate with the city. The street mm -hmm. lights out. You just make a phone call. It gets put on the list. And, you know, the alderman is not a part of that. Well, the alderman takes the blame when you do that and it doesn't happen. And it doesn't yeah. work. Right. Exactly. That's right. And it doesn't right. happen. But and the so alderman doesn't really have as much power to say, well, what, I want, you know, I What I, the I, constituent would do, though, Ken, if he, he, if he makes that 311 call and it doesn't work, then he's going to call the alderman. And if it doesn't mm -hmm. work, then, then he's got a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've seen, I've seen mm -hmm. in my own neighborhood street lights burning at broad daylight, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and, and, yeah. four, and four days to get them cut off. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens, they're not on at night, yeah, yeah, you know, course, yeah. I mean, no, how long does it take to replace them? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, so um, we are down now to our last basically 10 minutes of this uh, eight or 10 show series that we've been doing about the election, and we have the brain trust sitting at the table, so what's going to happen? I'm not going to say another <laughs> word. I just want to know <laughs> what's going to happen. Well, I want to tell you. I, yeah. I, have to, I have to ask you. Sure. You, you <laughs> have this really wonderful seat, this catbird seat, where you're doing afternoons on WVON, and the and the topic just it just won't stop. It's this whole thing about you know, are we going to vote for Chewy Garcia? Are we not? And mm -hmm. so forth. Well, I tell you, Ken, it's uh, I've had people on that I agree with, Laura Washington was on. She was saying that the polls don't make a difference. Uh, Phil Ponce said the same thing. He specifically mm -hmm. picked out the, the Trib poll mm -hmm. and said that he didn't see that being valid at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, I this think- is, This had Brom up like 28 points. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> said, yeah, yeah, he said that's ridiculous. But I think it's interesting because, uh, of course, WVON uh, has a lot Obviously, African American callers and listeners, although we have everybody, mm -hmm. which, as you're mm -hmm. saying, with iHeart. But when you have someone who's got the President of the United States coming in to endorse him, mm -hmm. and you've got uh, all the money you could possibly need, uh, whatever, and you still can't get 50% plus mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. there's a problem there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more people are voting against you than for you. And if Garcia had the money, mm -hmm. uh, I think he could. 
he could take this. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that he doesn't. There's so many things that uh, I mentioned to Ponce the other day when we were on, mm -hmm. talking about what happened. Uh, I said, one question you never asked. The ACLU, which I'm a member of, came up with the police department's own statistics. 70% yeah, yeah. of the people that they stop are African American. Mm -hmm. He tells me, well, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, fine. Yeah. About the sun? Okay. There are so <laughs> many things yeah. that yeah. Garcia could put out there, yeah. all the way from, yeah. from, you want to talk about his, oh, my God. you know, when you talk I about the history. I about running his, his ad campaign with a $20 oh. million dollar Well, budget. yeah, see, that's yes. the problem right there. Mick and I were talking about this obsessively last week, and that is, um, it's a huge, huge, almost insurmountable disadvantage when one fella has $20 million Mm -hmm. or 25 or yeah. whatever it is, and mm -hmm. the other fellow has four million and has scraped it together at the last minute. Mm -hmm. right. So Rom very successfully uh, put the public persona out of who Chewy Garcia is. Yeah. And th the media define followed along. They define yeah. their opponent. And right. as he has no plan and he's clueless, don't give him the reins. And so all the questions that go to mm -hmm. Chewy are about defend yourself from Rom's attack. Exactly, and, and then we talk about the who, who can, how does he put forth some sort of financial thing to work out for t Look what's happening to us now. <laughs> yeah, the, the bond houses yeah, are saying, yeah, great, you're yeah. you know, if this was a private corporation, we'd have to go into bankruptcy. Yeah. So You know what I mean? And look at yeah. CPS. So having said all that, is the Tribune correct when they say that 58% of Chicago will vote for Mayor Rahm and only 30% will vote for Chewy? Uh, which m means that 12%, I guess, is undecided. Well, don't forget the poll is just supporting the person they endorsed. Now, you know, are the you, Tribune. Wait, let me ask you, Cliff, are sure. you that cynical? Yeah, no, <laughs> let me tell you, it's, it's not cynical, I'm not truthful. Truthful, okay. I have been in rooms <laughs> where people have said, okay, we've got this poll, obviously you don't pay for a poll where you're gonna end up losing. Right. And they sit there and decide, okay, you get so many, I've been there. Well, you know what? I, I happen yeah. to be a, a minor expert on Tribune polls and Tribune policies. <laughs> this is just a field of mine. So <laughs> my favorite Tribune poll versus Tribune policy happens to do with the Olympics. Don't stop okay? me now. Don't get me off. Oh, can, right. can we go another half an hour? <laughs> I'm just warming up, Ken. I thought you were going to say oh. Dewey wins. So they said in their poll, 80% of Chicagoans, this was their poll, mm -hmm. didn't want to have the Olympics if they had to pay for it, which we were going to have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So to me, that means 80% of Chicago didn't want the Olympics, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. When we didn't get the Olympics, and thank you one more time, International Olympic Committee, right. the Tribune wrote an editorial saying, dry your eyes, Chicago, you know, what a noble effort. I'm like, who's crying? <laughs> your <laughs> own poll said that 80% of the city didn't want the Olympics. Nobody's crying. So you know what? There, there is a chance that the Tribune's editorial board is way out of touch with Chicago, you know what I'm saying? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. It's the whole way out of touch with Chicago. I, I don't know, that 58%, that. I, that just struck me as really high. Well, we did just have uh, um, uh, Sylvia Puente on from the Latino Policy Forum. They're the ones who did that other poll, which, which you know, was a bilingual poll, and the numbers were dramatically different for them. But the real question, I guess, is, is at this point, is it, is it even possible to, to climb over this deficit. I mean, it, it, it does appear that, that Emmanuel, well, the, you talk, the, no, I'm talking about his, uh, Garcia's deficit in poll numbers. I mean, he just has a long way to go to. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think we're all saying we don't believe that there's a 28 point margin. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. I, I personally think that I've said this in the beginning, I thought that it was Rom's race to lose, mm -hmm. I still think it is, but mm -hmm. it's not over. I don't know, I, I think we could be surprised. I, I think uh, we've seen, um, in the first round of balloting that Chewy and his supporters were under polled. I would assume that's the case here. I don't know if it's enough to make up that difference. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm skeptical that it is, but yeah. I think it'll be a lot closer than 28 points. 28 I'm just, points, yeah, that's I think outrageous. That's, oh, I think yeah. that's outrageous. Yeah. And I'd like to play devil's advocate, disagree with you guys a little bit. I actually don't think Chewy's major problem is a lack of money. I mean, we did the, ran the totals the other day. He's gonna end up with four and a, over four and a half million dollars. That's not, an insignificant amount. I don't think this is an arms race. You have to keep up dollar for dollar with mm -hmm. Mayor Emanuel, mm -hmm. who, as we've set, established, is unpopular enough to only get 45%, even though everyone, his name is plastered everywhere. I think his main issue is that he just got started so late. He well, didn't he, launch his campaign until right. November. 
He should have been launched. He should have launched in November the previous well, year. Well, this is this is the issue. I, I I I'm in complete agreement that you can you can kill twenty million dollars worth of advertising with four million dollars of advertising if it's if it's smart advertising. Right. But it's the it's the thing that Ben brought up, which is the defining your opponent, and they yeah. the, the Emmanuel right. force had had a long yeah, the, run the money ahead on that. accentuated all the advantages that Rom had anyway. Right. It makes absolutely correct. Chewy was a last minute substitution. Mm -hmm. for Karen Lewis, who was sort of a last-minute substitution for Tony Preckwinkle, right. who was a last-minute substitution for all the other wimps who wouldn't step up, <laughs> okay? So that the most unpopular mayor in my lifetime mm -hmm. uh, would have a legitimate opposition. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, he had a lot to learn in a short time, and it just made the most so money. So is there anyone at this that. table who is willing to say that Chewy Garcia has turned out to be a disappointing candidate? I, I hate to be the Phil Ponce I think exceeded expectations. Yeah, I, 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 I give him credit. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I give the man credit. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he understood. Let's we'll put it this way. I've got to be equal opportunity here. When Rom ran in 2010 and 2011, I don't think he understood Chicago. Mm -hmm. Okay, He made some claims. He went on TV in debates, particularly with mm -hmm. education at the top scoring schools, that showed that he truly was an outsider, hadn't lived in the city, hadn't been part of the debates. Mm -hmm. All right? So Chewy, I think, was a little f ahead of Rahm in that uh, game. But uh, other than that, he didn't. He hadn't been a participant in budget issues, so he didn't really understand. I don't think the dimensions of the problems that we're facing, and so he was learning. I no, always no, say he was no, no, no a understanding of ward politics. I don't. I still don't know if Rahm really understands. Oh, Rahm is talking about yeah. 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 But yeah, but Chewy's, Chewy's, but but Chewy's caught up. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, his background. You know, he's been in three different offices, yeah. which makes right. a big difference. He was he's in the council. Better than Rahm. He, he knows okay. the yeah. city. He knows the city politics, but yeah. to step up and be in the spotlight, I don't think. You know, he just. Did that for and did a good job for that. Yeah. He's, I think he's all I'm better talking about relative to money. If it had been spent, as you mentioned, Ken, in mm -hmm. good advertising, mm -hmm. there are some things that you could put on uh, the mayor, as you said. Yeah. About you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things you could put if you had the money and it was spent right. Yeah. yeah. All you do is reprint Ben's columns for. Like <laughs> 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 well, they pretty much stole everything I know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I I think he's done a good job. Yeah. I, I you know, I was running with all the disadvantages. Uh, there's been some low points for him. Uh, he stumbled, but uh, you know that's all candidates it's, it's have been their a bad vibrant days, runoff yeah. campaign. I think. I don't were know. you okay again to play the Phil Ponce role? Were you disappointed that he didn't even by the third debate come up with something more tangible about how he would deal with the finance issue? And we have thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, seconds to talk. Seconds. Now we're getting well, to the. I, I'd say this. He should. He should. He should have a better answer than. I can't say who my advisors are. Yeah. I think he that was that, too that, that was pretty yeah, 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 but it was he, that was that yeah. was pretty weak. Yeah. I thought, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's decisive in this election. I don't either. Yeah. I because don't either. it's more personal. I think it really yeah. is personal. It's, just, yeah. it's like, do you want this guy who, yeah, who, who sees is seen as a city guy versus how much do you dislike Rom versus how much do you know Chewy? I think that's yeah. really fundamentally yeah. what the qu Very question voters are asking. All right, so. Um, we do have 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is Rom going to win? Yes. Well, I got to stick with my Chewy prediction. <laughs> I'm with Chewy. Okay. All right. There you have it. Thank you so much, guys. What a great conversation and a nice way to end our little table hey. here. Ben Jarovsky, Chicago Reader, Mick Dumkey, Chicago Reader, and WVON's Governor of Talk Radio, Cliff <laughs> Kelly, joining Thank us for the first time, and I hope you'll come back here. again sometime, too. Anytime. Thanks. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. You can watch us anytime you like, but you can also see this show right now, anytime at all, by going to this address, and you can also um, catch us on iTunes and, you know, just... Just watch us. Watch Can TV all weekend long and watch all of those debates. There's de debate forums. Just you, you, you can't get enough. See you next week with another show when we're talking about who won the election right here on Can TV. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks. Bye for now.